Hello and welcome to another episode of the Floridian Sports Podcast. Thank you for joining in today. Today is another playoff episode, uh, this time for the Miami Heat's Game 3 and 4 review. And unfortunately, it's also a uh, series review. Uh, the Miami Heat did get swept by the Milwaukee Bucks 4-0 in that series. Very unexpected turnout, especially how some of the people thought, you know, the Heat had a really good chance of winning the series. I mean, if you watch the games, it's a different story. I mean, besides game one, it's never really close. Maybe at halfway through game four, but game four itself was kind of, you know, just a tease, really. And, and it's really unfortunate for a lot of these Miami Heat fans that were there for those games. Of course, the Miami Heat played at home for game three and game four. Uh, they came into those two games being down 0-2 in the series and were in real threat. You know, the offense wasn't really clicking at all. They looked really much like a chicken with no head. I mean, they did pick up some of the pace offensively in these two games. Of course, game four is kind of the real bright side of this series besides the game one performance on defense. But I'm going to go into those two games. And then, of course, I'm going to go into the series and, and maybe even to the to the off season as well. We'll be having episodes in the future for not only the Miami Heat, but also for the Orlando Magic when the draft comes in for the lottery picks and maybe even a draft prospect and what's going on in free agency. We'll keep you updated for that for the Miami Heat and as well for the Orlando Magic. However, let's go right into these two games, uh, the two home games in Miami, starting with game three. That was at Miami as well. Unfortunately, Miami, they just weren't really winning any of the quarters in this game three offensively. They had a lot of struggles. The mid-range game was not going for anybody, especially for Bam and Obayo. He really wasn't finding anything past the free throw line and he only was successful at anything that he did offensively when Brooke Lopez wasn't in the paint I mean I even saw him scoring on an Akupo which makes you think you know how does he do that on an Akupo but he can't get past the Brooke Lopez I mean it makes you think a little bit about you know his integrity however I'm pretty sure Pat Riley is going to keep him for a good while unfortunately as they go through this game first quarter uh 26 14 Milwaukee is leading after this first quarter. Uh, the good rhythm Bucks offense, I mean, that's a hell of an offense that they have over there. Even guys off the bench, they really did not stop at all. Either have Chris Middleton not make a lot of shots, not really go for a lot of attempts. Uh, Portis, a big man coming off from the bench over there, as well as uh, Forbes, as we all know, Byron Forbes. A real consistent three-point shooter in this series, which is kind of a shocker to some cases. However, it's not a shock to the Milwaukee Bucks. So Milwaukee, they do go really well. Uh, fouls were one thing about this quarter. There was a lot of fouls on both sides, which I kind of found it odd, knowing that you know both of these teams are really defensive-minded, so you wouldn't really think that they would convert such fouls. But you know, a lot of fouls in the paint, and you know both teams were driving the paint, as we know Milwaukee is really well on that one with Honor Kupo. as a of course, speaking of fouls in the paint and on a Kupo, they got a shot clock on him. It was the funniest thing, man. You should have seen it. The, the past two games have been just straight shot clock countdown from the crowd. 15 seconds, and you just hear the crowd in Miami go, one, two, three, four, and they're just counting down on a Kupo, and you got to love that. That's just intensity and and just, you know, on a Kupo having a little bit of, like, you know, fear in his shot, you know what I mean? So it's definitely something that was entertaining, to get something to get the crowd in the game. And unfortunately, they never really got back in this game. Uh, second quarter, we're talking about not only Bam and Abayo here. I'm looking at my notes right now. Majority of this Miami team going at the end of the first half, 14 and 45. That's 31% of from the field. 31%. 14 and 45. You at least make 50 and you're in the game. You know what I mean? You make 50% of those shots, you're in the game right there and then. They're only down by 13 here. It was a close quarter offensively in the sense of, you know, they only got outscored by one point. But at the same time, it's it's the idea that you're not even making 50% of your shots, let alone 45%. And you can't win games, let alone a game against one of the best teams out there in the Eastern Conference and a real contender. So the real reason of that I mean, it's got to be the Bucks perimeter defense to me. They're really holding on to the right side. Duncan Robinson couldn't really do much this game at all. I believe Duncan, at the end of the day, 
only two points. He went one and six in a day, and that was the majority of it because they were just trapping him. They were really suffocating. As I said before, the Miami Heat wanted to win this series. They had to do just what Milwaukee was doing on the perimeter, act like pythons. They had to suffocate that perimeter defense, and Milwaukee did what they had to do. Um, the Heat did transition defensively. Uh, they swayed away from the man defense because they saw a lot of guys getting open back and forth from an oncoming, you know, somebody drives in, and that's going to collapse in the paint, have someone open the perimeter. So they changed it to, a, I believe, it was a 2-3 zone. Uh, it did help out a little bit. You know, he was still in the game defensively, but unfortunately the offense just never does click. Now, the one thing that's kind of huge about this uh, quarter, uh, the Bucks guard – uh, DiVincenzo, he basically gets injured by the ankle, and he's going to be gone for the rest of this series. Does he, I mean, I I can't really say too much about the injury myself. Uh, I do assume that he's going to be back for that round two when they go against the Brooklyn Nets. So hopefully he does get healthy. We do hope that, you know, players that do get injured do, you know, show out again, for, especially in the playoffs. But, you know, that will come in later on for the, uh, fourth game because that's like another threat on the bench that they don't really have to worry in Miami so straight off the half of course we're talking about an even bigger deficit you know at the end of the third it's 86-60 Milwaukee uh, the Bucks really do separate themselves here I'm going straight off the notes right here we're talking about a 37 point quarter for Milwaukee and how does Miami respond with that they respond with 24 points 24 points I mean, you know, it's better than the first quarter, but then again, I mean, what's 24 compared to 14 added on? I mean, you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous. It's really ridiculous what this Miami team's doing. There's no real ball movement. Everything seems like a frustrating measure just to move around. It, it, it's terrible. I mean, I think in the first six minutes of this quarter, it, it took that long just to get 10 points on the board for the quarter for the Miami Heat. It's a terrible start to the second half, and they really don't, you know, respond for the rest of the game. As I said before, we're talking about the ending 113 to 84. Milwaukee taking game three. And as I said before, you know, a really off game offensively. Duncan Robinson, as I said before, one in six, two points. And Trevor Ariza, as I said, got to sit him. I don't believe Trevor Ariza should be a starter, especially at the four position, if you're going to put him there. You know, I mean, Eric Spolster, he has that type of offense where you probably have more guys on the perimeter in the sense of your offense. But defensively, he's not getting anything done. And he has really cold nights. And speaking of cold nights, he went 0-4. He had 18 minutes and 28 seconds as a starter, according to my notes. 0-4, 0 points. Now, here's the funny thing about this. Bialika, I think I butchered his name a little bit. Uh... Maralika, he basically had 14 points, 4 and 6 off the bench. And the funniest thing about it, 18 minutes and 15 seconds. You know, stats don't lie. Time doesn't lie either. If you're scoring 14 off the bench in the same amount of time that a starter gets, you're good. You're solid. That's a great game for you individually. But if you're a starter... Zero points, same time as a bench player, that, that's a real issue. And I understand guys being in the starting lineup for a little bit, then they sway back and forth with the bench for minutes and, like, you know, position play, but that's a real issue. You're causing the Heat a lot of big moments in the game. You're talking about 18 minutes, and you're not really doing anything on the court. I mean, I can't even say defensively either. I mean, I'm not saying Ariza had a terrible game defensively. I'm just saying he didn't have a game where – you can, you know, redeem your zero points. And you hope he did that the next game. And he did do that the next game. So the next game is game four. Of course, they're, you know, on the brink of elimination back in Miami. And they uh, they, they, they actually responded. They actually responded. They ended up uh, going back-to-back -back on the most points scored in a quarter for their series. I'm going straight off the notes here. Uh, speaking of which, uh, notes are actually brought to you by uh, Highway Temptation. It's a really good uh, YouTube channel out there to do a lot of good stuff for uh, Final Fantasy. If you're a fan for Final Fantasy or even gaming in general, it's a great group of guys and they're really fun. So I would take advice 
and probably look into it. And it's the Highway Temptation on Instagram, and they're actually having a Twitter very soon. Now, back to the notes. Straight from the notes from this first quarter, we're talking about Ariza redeeming himself. We're talking about 11 points, four and five in just one quarter. I mean, that's a huge turnaround for him, let alone because I've been on him this entire series. I really don't believe much in Ariza. If he stays next year, it's going to be from the grace of Pat Riley. But, you know, he definitely showed himself out in this game. Uh, you know, there's more movement, especially more movement in the paint. They're really fast. I, I, I just felt like this Miami team actually woke up. I felt like for the first time since game one that, you know, they were actually feeling that they could, you know, go on a run offensively. So it was a really good first quarter, you know, even though, you know, only up by four. But it's something, though, especially when on an elimination game, you want to have some type of leverage over, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks if they're on the brink of eliminating you. You know, Bam Adebayo has a really good uh, offensive game in the start, you know, and he's. I think he was kind of like the main focus. You know, he was kind of the guy that brought the team up offensively. So, when Bam is doing good, you know the team's doing good. So, Bam doing good. Bam doing good in the paint as well. Ariza in the corner threes. He was actually 3-3 three and three so far in the game from three-pointers. So, let's go to the second quarter. In the second quarter, they extend the lead. They extend the lead. Uh, they end the first half 64-57 to 57 Miami. And, you know, Miami continues to score early. Uh, about 50% from the field so far, which is a huge difference from 31% from the last game. I mean, a 19% difference, and it's just showing, you know, that they were attacking the paint. They rate jumpers were dropping down, which was the first time, you know, this entire series. I really thought they were going to switch up their mid-range game, but I guess they, they hold on. You know, Jimmy Butler really did take advantage of some of the mid-range opportunities, which he should and, you know, it's the reason why his stat line was so terrible in that second game because he wasn't taking advantage of those mid-range, not knocking them down. He was doing this game. He was doing that real well. So Miami, you know, they go out, uh, as I said before, you know, most points in a quarter in the first with 26. Scratch that. 38 points in a quarter in the second quarter. This is the best quarter Miami has had offensively. I could argue defensively, however, uh, you know, the Bucks kind of like at the last minute, they kind of matched up on the offensive movement, transition back, gets back and forth. It was a really fast game, really entertaining game at the, near the ending of that quarter. I believe it was, uh, let's see, the last five minutes? The last five minutes, I mean, I think every possession lasted maybe 15 seconds. It was like an old four Steve Nash out there, you know. And uh, Mike D'Antoni was on both sides of the court, <laughs> you know. So it was that type of fast-paced game at the last five minutes, really entertaining basketball. Uh, and another entertaining thing, you know, I said in the last review, you know, they got to get Brooke Lopez in foul trouble. They got to get Brooke Lopez in foul trouble. Bam and Obama needs to get Brooke Lopez in foul trouble. Well, not only did Brooke get in foul trouble, it was also Giannis Antetokounmpo getting in foul trouble. Both of them had three fouls at this point of the game. And Giannis was 1-7 from the field. 1-7 from the field at the half. So Miami, you know, best half they had this entire series. And all they have to really do is just play defense and keep matching the offensive intensity that they've been, you know, that they've been producing from these two quarters. And, you know, as the story goes, you know, a sleeping giant wakes up. Milwaukee, insane quarter. They have an insane quarter. We're talking Milwaukee at the end of the third quarter, 91 over the Heat. Heat's 85. So 91-85 after the third quarter. The Miami Heat go up, let's see here, 54, 57. They were up by seven. They gave up about was that 19 points. They gave up 19. They got outscored in the third quarter by 19 points in a, in an elimination game with the lead. And why is that? Well, I'll tell you why. It was uneasy offense for Miami in the beginning of the game. Tyler Hero got in there and he started shooting threes like, you know, he was a bubble. He's not in the bubble anymore. I'll tell you that right now. It's it's definitely a huge sophomore slump for him this year. Uh, maybe he goes back in the third year of his career and he, you know, regains himself. But this game, I feel like his shots, 
and a lot of Miami just trying to force something that makes sure they keep a lead or at least match up on some of the baskets that Milwaukee was making, it definitely cost the game in the third quarter. I mean, straight from the notes I took down, I saw a lot of the Bucks going to run the push through Miami's exposed paint. You know, Bam Adebayo, he was there, but he wasn't going to stop on a Kubo every single time, a Brook Lopez every single time. And they really, you know, even though three fouls each, they really didn't really foul much after that. And we're kept in the game a really good fair amount of minutes. Now, you know, the Bucks, they did also get fouled. Um, it was really kind of a disappointing take from these referees. They called a lot of, like, you know, problematic fouls. Like, fouls like you shouldn't even, like, you know, see on television if they show you a replay on TNT and it's like, Man, this guy, this guy didn't even touch him. Well, it was that type of fouls that Miami was getting called for. So the Bucks extended lead from the foul line. They extended from a three-point range. They went on, I think, let's see here. They went on one run, 10 unanswered points, and that's like in about two minutes, right? Then afterwards, Miami got a little bit of a run, like about five points or so. Milwaukee responds 21 to four run in four minutes and 30 seconds. So you're not stopping that. You're not you're not stopping that if you're any team. A twenty one and four run, it's like the defense just kinda gave up when they gave up that lead and they were down by more than two possessions. And, you know, the fourth quarter, I mean, the fat lady sinks. You know, Milwaukee wins hundred and twenty to hundred and three. And that's basically the wrap up of this series. And Miami just never got back in their offensive flow. You know, it's really unfortunate that this Miami team had to end the, the year on a sweep. You know, they really did fight well for the sixth seed. You know, they beat out Boston. They beat out Charlotte. And, you know, on a, on a Kupo, as we all know, you know, he really did want this revenge series. But, I mean, this is still a Miami team that could have had a little bit more in them. Because, yeah, sure, you could say Miami could have done this. They could have fought a little bit more. They didn't want it as much. But they also had some injuries here and there, you know. I mean, all the depot could have been a huge game changer. If it was all the depot you know, before the surgery, that's a 20-point score, you know. I mean, after the surgery, I feel like he's not the same guy. I don't know how much he'll be a change in the series. I really don't see him getting back to his rhythm of self. Hopefully he does by next year, and at least ending of next year, I can only assume. But it's definitely something that you have to, you know, put a lot of what-ifs on. You know, what if all the depot started? What if Deadman was starting most of the game? What if Ariza was making a lot of the shots? What if Tyler Hero was making threes? You know? Now, there's a lot of what ifs. There's a lot of what ifs, but unfortunately, you know, the what ifs, they don't change the future. They don't change the past. They're just what ifs. So now Miami goes to the off season. Of course, uh, it's a lot of to look forward this year if you're Miami. It's a lot of, you know, guys who are available. Duncan Robinson, he's going to be asking for, I, I mean, He's got to be asking for the skies. He's got to be asking for some ridiculous number. But I know Pat Riley is going to get something out there because he's the godfather. Pat Riley, he is the man to get the job done if you really want another player out there. A sign in straight a couple of years with Jimmy Butler and Jason Richardson. And, you know, only Pat Riley. Only Pat Riley. So I have a lot of faith in the Miami team. I expect them to be back in the playoffs next year. Maybe – contribute one more all-star. However, if they're going to get somebody, they got to get another big for Bam and Obio. You got to make another, you know, front court nightmare. Something that the Pelicans did back then with Boogie Cousins and Anthony Davis. That was a real front court nightmare. They got to do something like that. What are they going to do in the sense of, I mean, I can't really tell you right now. However, look out for a future video for the off-season reviews and the off-season details. When, uh, of course, this NBA playoff season ends and we get to see, you know, if there's any contracts re-signed or, you know, some verbal agreements. And hopefully there's going to be a lot of verbal agreements for the Miami Heat and also for the Orlando Magic. As we know, you know, they're also going to be a lottery team this year. It's not going to be a pretty sight for them. However, we'll always be there to cover the Orlando Magic as well. So that's basically the review for the uh, games three and four, and as well as the series for the Milwaukee Bucks and the Miami Heat. I want to thank you again for joining in. And if you're you're new to the channel, subscribe, give a like, you know, give any type of like comment you want to. It's no problem to me. I 
I'm literally learning as I go. <laughs> I'm literally learning as I go. So, you know, thank you, and, you know, I'll see you guys next time.